I will now be discussing to you the last topic under the receivables chapter. So this is more about the promissory notes or yung second type of your receivable which is the notes receivable. Okay, remember that last time, ano, sa isa sa mga episodes na diniscuss ko, uh, pinag-usapan natin yung dalawang klase ng receivables. At basically kasi, di ba, ang difference lang naman nitong dalawa ay yung security. Kasi, yung accounts receivable, they are unsecured rights to receive cash in the future. Pero pagdating sa notes receivable, eto ay mga secured rights to receive, note, uh, to receive cash in the future as evidenced by a formal written. Okay? A formal letter which is your promissory note. And when we are talking about promissory note, makagaya ng sinasabi dito, ano, sorry kasi medyo malabo lang, hindi bumaga yung kulay. This is a formal promise to pay. Now, pag sinasabi kasi natin na promissory note, this is a written promise by one party to pay another party a specific sum of money at a future date. O, tandaan ninyo na kapag merong promissory note, may nangutang at may nagpautang. Either this is in the sense of sales on credit or sales on account, o kaya naman because the company na nagpautang or yung person na nagpautang ay part ng isang lending institution. So, merong borrower at saka merong nagpapa-borrow. Okay. Now, when we are dealing with promissory notes, marami tayong mga terminologies na may encounter. At kailangan familiar ka din sa mga terminologies na yon. Otherwise, baka maligaw ka kung ano yung kailangan mong hanapin doon sa problem. Oh, I have here in my illustration, pa, ano nga natin? Palakihin natin para makita ninyo. Oh, these are the relevant terms in a promissory note. I have the maker okay, or the debtor. Pag sinabi natin na maker, yung date debtor, siya yung nanghiram. Siya yung nangutang. Okay, siya yung gumawa ng promissory note. Ang tawag din natin dyan ay payor. Yung other party naman, yung hiniraman, yung nagpautang, sila yung creditor or siya yung payee. Kung sino yung pinangakuan pinangakuan kung ano na naman yung naiisip ninyo. <laughs> o pag credit term, this is the period of time between the time na yung maker gumawa ng promissory note at nangangako siya na magbabayad doon sa due date. O yung due date, okay, or the maturity date, eto yung date kung saan magbabayad na ng utang yung maker. O such that yung credit term is the period in between. So, example lang ano, today is Uh, sabi na natin na uh, today is July 28 July 28, naggawa ako nangutang kasi ako, so gumawa ako ng promissory note, payable 30 days after, so sabi na natin na uh, August 28 uh, kunwari lang ano, hindi ko na tinignan yung accuracy ng petsa pero assuming, sa August 28 ko siya babayaran, so yung credit term is the period in between from the time today na naggumawa ako ng promissory note hanggang sa bayaran ko ito sa August 28. Now, yung principal ay yung pang pang ilan na ito? Pang lima, yung principal or your face value, ito yung amount na inutang ng borrower o ng maker or ng debtor. Kung halimbawa nangutang ako ng 50,000, oh 50,000 is the principal amount or the face value. Ngayon, siyempre, yung nagpapautang, hindi naman yan manghi, magpapahiram ng libre lang. There is a cost of ma borrowing money. Ang tawag natin doon sa cost na yon ay the interest. Okay? O cost of money borrowed or lent. And, siyempre, para makompute natin yung interest, meron tayong tinatawag na interest rate. And yung interest rate, ito yung expressed in terms of percentage. The percentage of interest is specified in the note. If silent, interest is simple interest rate and refers to annual percentage. Sa investment mathematics kasi, or kung ano man yung equivalent na subject title nito sa inyong eskwelahan, may mga computation, may mga iba-iba pa kasing computation yan eh, yung interest rate. Simple, compound, hindi ko na maalala, baka magkamali pa ako ng masabi. Basta dito, kapag simple, walang sinasabi yung problem kung yung percentage referring to what, it is annual. Isang taon yung interest na yon And 
computed simple interest rate. Okay? Oh, now, yung last item dito, yung maturity value, this is the amount to be paid in due date. So, this is your principal plus interest. That is your maturity value. Oh, take for instance, I have here an example. Dito, makikita ninyo yung isang promissory note. On July 1, yung gumawa ng promissory note na yon, sabi niya, oh, 30 days after date, we promise to pay Sunshine Bank the amount of 100,000 pesos value received with interest of 6%. Sincerely, respectfully, okay, si XYZ Company. Now here, yung gumawa ng promissory note ay si XYZ. Siya yung maker, siya yung debtor, siya yung payor, siya yung borrower, okay? Sino yung pinag-utangan? That is your sunshine company. Siya si payee, siya si creditor. Siya yung nagpahiram ng isang daang libong piso. O dito, yung July 1, eto yung date kung kailan ginawa yung ka, ano, yung promissory note. And yung due date mo will be July 31. Kasi sinasabi dito na 30 days after date. So magbibilang tayo. And normally ano, Ang pagka-count natin is excluding yung date na yon. So, mag-umpisa yan ng July 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 30 days. July 31 ang due date. O, pero later on, ipapakita ko sa inyo yung paraan para hindi ka na magbilang sa kamay. <laughs> para hindi ka magkamali doon sa petsa, yung due date. Yung 30 days dito, ang tinatawag natin ay yung credit term. Okay, ito yung period from the time na nanghiram hanggang siya babayaran ito on July 31. Now, ang principal dito is the 100,000. Another term for the principal is your face value. Ano yung value ng inutang na nasa face ng promissory note? And then, your interest rate is 6%. And if that is silent, that is computed in terms of annual rate and simple interest rate. Ibig sabihan, yung 6% na yan is good for 1 year. O, meron pa tayong dalawang terminologies na na-encounter sa previous slide, ba? And that is your maturity value and then your interest rate. Ah, oh, sorry, interest na amount. O, para malaman natin yan, kasi meron yung simple na computation, o, next slide tayo. For interest, you have here the following formula. It is expressed as I equals PRT or interest equals the principal times interest rate times time. O, samantalang, yung maturity value is basically your principal plus interest rate. O, papaano natin ito i-compute? Mag-start muna tayo dito kay interest. O, I have here the table. The interest computation, we have principal of 100,000. Uh, yung interest rate mo is 6%. And, how about the time? Kasi diba, yung formula na susundan ninyo, eh, itong nasa baba. And the time here is expressed in number of days. Dito, 30 days. O, ganito guys, kasi minsan, in-express yan in terms of days or in terms of months. O, kapag tauna naman kasi yan, in terms of year. When days yung ginagamit, kagaya ng nasa example, we use 1 over 360 and computing for your applicable na interest rate kasi itong 6% na ito good for 1 year so since ang utang lang naman ang duration nito ay 1 month kailangan natin or 30 days kailangan natin i-prorate okay? i-allocate so gagamitin natin yung 1 over 360 where 1 stands for oh, sabi na natin n over 360 where n stands for the number of days Kaya dito, ang time natin ay 30 over 360. Pag, let's say, sinabi naman dito na 1 month after date, o gamitin natin, times 1 over 12. Can you follow? Okay? Am I being too fast? O, in such case, ang computation natin ng interest will be 100 times 6% times 30 over 360. Ang makukuha natin ay 500 pesos. Can you follow? O, dahil given na ito na interest, 
kunin natin yung maturity value, that's basically your principal plus the computed interest of 500. Kaya ang total natin as maturity value will be 100,500 pesos. Okay? O, oh, labas muna tayo dito. Proceed tayo dito sa ating um, presentation. Oh, makikita mo, meron na lang tayong ilang slides sa ating presentation. Ang next kasi natin na pag-uusapan is the journal entries. Oh, with some important notes and then, paano kong dinis honor ng borrower, yung kanyang utang. Ah, sige. When we are doing the journal entries, let's check on both parties, either side. No? O, nasa kaliwa natin is yung borrower, yung maker. Ang nasa kanya naman is the payee or the creditor. O, on the date of borrowing, nung nagpautang, on the side of the borrower, we debit cash, yung nangutang, ano, 100,000 and we credit notes payable for 100,000 pesos. O dahil secured ito ng promissory note, kaya naging notes payable. Kung unsecured ito, this will be an accounts payable. O on the side of the payee, yung nagpautang, we debit notes receivable because of the promissory note and credit to cash kasi nabawasan yung kanyang pera for 100,000. As you can see here, reciprocal yung ano no, journal entries. Kumbaga, mirror images na naman ito. So, sa kabila, receivable. Sa kabila, payable. O, on the date of payment, sa July 31, on the part of the maker, yung nag nangutang, we debit interest expense for the 500. And then, we debit the notes payable kasi isisettle na. 100,000 and credit to cash for 100,000 and 500 pesos. So, that's how we deal with uh, payment of the notes. Oh, kailangan natin i-recognize as expense kasi this is the cost of borrowing money on the part of the debtor. Samantalang, pagdating kay payee, oh, debit ng cash, nakolekta na kasi natin yung pinautang. Credit the notes receivable kasi nabayaran na siya. And then, meron tayong i-recognize na income which is your interest income of 500 pesos. Now, kung ito ay isang lending company, isang financing company, yung interest income na ito ay isang revenue account um, because it is on the ordinary course of business. Yun yung kanyang source of business, source of income. Pero kung ito ay mga, nan, uh, mga iba, iba yung nature of the business, this will be other operating income or other non-operating income. It depends. Okay? On important note, if the note will be collected beyond the period covered by the income statement, it is necessary to accrue interest revenue already earned but not yet received. O kung tumawid ito ng taon, kasi diba at the end of the year, naggagawa tayo ng financial statement, kailangan natin mag-accrue. I-recognize yung mga kailangan i-recognize para mag-adjust tayo ng mga accounts. O kung may tumawid dyan, kailangan natin i-accrue yung interest revenue na kinita na pero hindi pa nabayaran. Kasi normally, yung mga interest, babayaran kasabay nung pagsisettle ng ating mga receivables or the notes. Okay? Another one. Just a pointer ano, to remember. Kung hindi nagbayad yung borrower, no? on the date of maturity or yung maturity date, the maturity value will be reverted back to accounts receivable. Kasi, sino why? Hindi itinuloy ng debtor yung pangako niya na magbabayad. Parang nawala na ng silbi yung notes, yung promissory note. I-revert ito sa accounts receivable. So that on the part of the payee or the creditor, we debit accounts receivable for the full amount, including yung notes receivable and interest income. O dito, notes receivable, ikikredit natin at face value ito. Alright? And then, interest receivable, kung magkano man yung receivable computed. Interest receivable, para doon sa previous period na nirecognize na natin yung income. Yung interest income here, if applicable, para sa subsequent period kung nagtawid ito ng taon 
So guys, maraming salamat sa inyong panunood sa aking video sa ngayon and I hope you learned something from me from this episode and I'll hope to see you around on the next episodes to come.